everyone, this is Emily. And this is Haley. We would like to thank everyone for all of their love and support, so we are doing a 500 follower, 2,000 download giveaway. The winner will receive a set of spooky cursed dice and a hand-knit HLP can koozie. This HLP koozie is one of only six ever made. With it, you can drink along in style with the HLP crew every week. Yeah, so to get on with um, the rules and how you enter. So uh, you will get one entry for a retweet and a like on Twitter, and we are at Laughter Hideous. You will get a, if you like and share on Facebook, you will get an entry. Um, like and leave a comment with a friend tagged on Instagram at Hideous Laughter Pod, and you'll get an entry. Uh, or you can just email us with your favorite moment, NPC, PC, or episode at the hideous laughter podcast at gmail.com. So those are all ways you can get one entry. You can stack those. So if you do all of them, you will get four entries. Now you can also get two entries if you do a written review on iTunes. If you do not use your normal name, um, or Twitter handle or anything else where we can contact you, please just send us an email with proof that it's you and you'll get two entries for that written review. And anyone who's already had a review already is entered in twice. Enjoy the show. Do you like liquor and things that go boo? Then buckle up, listener, because this one's for you. Prepare yourself for the Hideous Laughter Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hideous Laughter Podcast, episode 13, guys. We had quite the week, didn't we? Quite the long week. I think it's time, time to see what everybody's drinking. That's a hams. Hey, I like that speed. Uh, truly, Griffin. Nice. Haley. Rum and Pepsi. Emily. Moscato. Moscato. I myself am drinking a very lemonade Spirinoff Celty. Ah, delicious. So, guys, we just released our... Halloween spooktacular. I wanted to get your opinions on, like, you know, how you thought it went, how you enjoyed playing or didn't enjoy playing evil characters. Um, so why don't we start with Steve and go around? You guys tell me what you thought. I had a lot of fun playing something different. I I know I said on the Halloween special that I've never played a non caster before. So it was kind of interesting. One, just to one, playing an, uh, an evil character and two, playing a class that. I have never really thought about exploring before. I've never played a barbarian and I had a lot, lot, lot of fun doing it. And hopefully that's not the last you see of old Saw Moon. Oh God. You blew it. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's already been so long since we recorded. It's almost been 72 hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, old Saw Moon Isle. He's got more stories to tell. You sure he's not Saw Moon Blade. Got him. <laughs> Pretty sure. Yes. Yes, he is not that. Nice. I, I can imagine you enjoyed being able to roll to attack four fucking times at level five. Seems a little... Uh, just, just statistically, I was able to get double-digit numbers with all those rolls, which is something my regular character doesn't seem to be able to do. Well, I mean, even if you rolled as poorly as Matumbe, since you were rolling so frequently, it seemed like it balanced out. Yeah, you know, You're every, every, on, every dog has his day, you know? Hitting on at least half your attacks every time. It, and in this case, every tiger gets to stay. Great. What yeah. about you, Brooks? What'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic to uh, play as a new character. I think that was probably the best part about it overall. Um, well, you don't like old Ick? Oh, of course I love Ick. It was just a new character. And of course, you're... Uh, you have new experiences with new characters, uh, and I I love that. Um, I'm looking forward to the Christmas, the evil Christmas. Yeah, don't put that out there. <laughs> no, no, no. Cut the mic. All right, what about you, Haley? What do you think? Um, I thought it was really good. I really loved how it was um, both unique to 
uh, these characters, but also a, a good glimpse into the past and you have to see how Entrellis went mad. Um, good tie in. Yeah. I think, I think if we, if we continue to release these in the future, it's all going to tie into where the, um, where the Raven Grove four are heading and what they're doing. Yeah. Also, I mean, who doesn't want to play a witch that feeds people cookies made of kids? I heard uh, HBO was looking to do a Nana Opal spinoff. Little uh, miniseries, maybe? Miniseries. <laughs> How to bake your kids. I mean, just a little bit. I think they left a four out of the title. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I think I'd need help from Dr. Viv, though. <laughs> oh, she'd be a great co-host. She'd bring so much science and knowledge to the general population. And the bones. Bill Nye and the Great British Baking Show. Oh. So what do you think, Emily? Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, I actually really enjoyed playing as an evil character. I was a little worried that I wouldn't uh, be up for the task, but I actually loved being able to be so driven and so motivated that she could push anything off to the side and just do whatever was in her best interest and the interest of her research so she could really focus and kind of lean into that and have those kind of quirky traits to her. Yeah, she was uh, she was pretty creepy. <laughs> not going to lie. You were worried about not being up to the task and you were like legitimately one of the creepiest ones. <laughs> well, I was also a little worried about the, the blood and gore that would come along with Vivian. But uh, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. All right. As for me... Um... I enjoyed it. It was a lot of, a lot of work from all of us, obviously, but it was kind of fun to basically create that backstory, do all that, you know, homebrew kind of thing, which following an adventure path, you kind of get to do partially, but you're still kind of on the rails of a book to some extent. I know thus far, I've definitely thrown you guys on a couple of side quests that are obviously not a hundred percent in the main AP, but I think you guys kind of se seem to enjoy that thing, that kind of thing. So I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, I'm pretty excited if we get the chance to bring these characters back. There's a lot of good opportunities. I'm a little worried about when shit like uh, Saw Moon Isle interacts with uh, some of our squishier characters. And I uh, yeah. feel like uh, maybe we be, have to be like a solo encounter there. <laughs> Y'all haven't seen the fucking last of me. It's ah! Ugh. But, um, yeah, I had a great time. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it, too. But I'm ready to get back into our main story. And where I left you guys was a pretty tense situation. The citizens of Ravengrow were peppering you guys with questions. You were just kind of announced as the solution to the town's problems, despite, you know, killing Gibbs and shit. But... You're, it seems like you're getting the recognition you deserve as adventurers, as problem solvers, as pseudo detectives. So you're getting that rec recognition from the higher ups, but the townsfolk don't really trust you 100%. But where I left you off in the moment was that the braziers in the town hall all came to life in a burning, fiery inferno and started burning down the building, catching some citizens in the blaze. You are all upstage currently. And this guy starts screaming. No! <laughs> <laughs> and I think before we roll for initiative and enter combat, Ikmer in the moment, is staring into this fire. Ignoring all else, he doesn't even seem to hear the cries of the townsfolk around him or the panic of his friends as this building starts to light up. And as we fade behind Ikmer's eyes and forward, we see a dark night with a full moon and Ikmer staring at a cooking fire, surrounded by some of his compatriots when he was a caravan guard for Professor Lorimore. 
and they sit by the fire on this night on the edge of the woods, set up camp. And I think Lorimore is sitting there with them. And after a time, he, he warms his hands. He grabs himself a bowl of the stew that they had been preparing. Um, and he sidles up to Ikmer. And he says, My boy, it's... I've, I've been meaning to talk to you. I know that you're new to the caravan. I, I wanted to officially welcome you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Lorimore. I really appreciate that. Now, how have you been adjusting? I know life on the road is not, is not as glamorous as it sometimes seems. Well, actually, it's, uh, pretty nice to get away. Uh, when I'm working, people, uh, don't seem to beat me up quite so much. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I can, uh, heal up. While I'm uh, on the road, but to be honest, I'm a little worried because uh, my mom, she probably needs me to drop off the drinking money pretty soon. Oh, Ikmer, drinking money. No, my boy, we're, we're on a journey. Together. Join us on this adventure. It's Think of it as an adventure. It's going to be fun. You're not merely my caravan guard. Don't think of it like that. Uh, well, see, I, I really appreciate that, but, uh, the only reason why I can really get out is so that I can, uh, get paid and then, uh, and then, you know, help my mom out with, uh, giving her all of the money. <laughs> Just like every, but every child. And I think upon saying this, Ikmer takes a brief moment. And he looks up at the full moon. And Lorimore lets him be comfortable in that silence. And when he looks back at Lorimore, he comments, My boy, have, have your eyes always been that shade of yellow? Uh, I, I think you're uh, trying to... Uh, play a trick on me or something. My my eyes are definitely brown. My boy, and they're as yellow as that moon in the sky. I I had never recognized it before. And as they continue to talk, you hear wolves howling in the distance, and they start to sound closer. <laughs> Lorimore and his guards begin to sit on edge, waiting, hoping that the wolves will pass. Unfortunately, the snapping of twigs in the woods beyond means that the wolves have picked up their scent and are coming for them. In a flash, eight wolves descend on the pack, one bigger than the other seven, with a gray stripe down its back. They bear down on the party. And unfortunately, Ikmer is sitting there weaponless. Lorimore pulls out his spell book and begins to sling spells. Ikmer sees a wall of force surround him. And then he sees bolts of force and a fireball passes, pass by his periphery. As wolves go up in flames. One of his contemporaries, another caravan guard is brought down by the big wolf and it bites him, tears out his throat and begins eating him. Lorimore and Ikmer both look at this at the same moment and Lorimore picks up the broken spear of the man who had just been fighting off the wolf and tosses it to Ikmer. Ikmer once more gazes upon the full moon and he feels his blood begin to boil. He feels this surge of strength and energy that he never felt fighting in the fighting pits. He bears down on the alpha wolf and brings the spear between its head and its neck, killing it instantly. He can see around him the other seven wolves begin to back away. 
and they scamper into the woods. And Ickmer could almost swear he saw one nod at him. He takes a moment before pulling the spear from the dead wolf. And when he looks down, he realizes his spear is in the body of a man. And we fade back to the burning town hall. Herocard. Woot woot. All right, I got the fiend. The fiend. I'm guessing that's an evil hero card. It, sounds it is. So remember that gives uh, gives me disadvantage on any roll of your choosing. So keep that in your notebook. Make sure you got it. Now I need everybody to roll for initiative as this building starts to go up in flames. Seven on the die for modifier, bringing me to an eleven. Five. Sixteen. Eleven. What's your modifier? Two. <laughs> okay, so Matumbe will act before Ikmer. All right. You see this building go up in flames. You see a couple town folk too close to the fire. And what I need you guys to do is to begin drawing the squares where this fire spreads. So the fire is currently in all of the spots that I have marked as a brazier. So you can just scribble some orange into those squares. Now at the start of this round, the fire spreads to an adjacent square for each of them. So the square in the south West begins burning diagonally to the northeast of it. So that one spreads into the pews. Yep, it spreads into the pews there. Real close to some villagers. The one in the southeast also spreads to the yep, to the diagonal northwestern corner and that villager you can flip him upside down because he is caught in the blaze oh god somebody already died it's not necessarily dead I'm going to explain these rules okay, after okay. I move the fire the um, the fire in the northwest begins burning directly north of it and the fire in the northeast begins burning directly south of it Finally, the fire on the stage begins burning uh, directly south of it. And you can count that as one square. Perfect. So you see these fires spread. You see a villager caught in the blaze. All of the bottle caps I have marked on this map are villagers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a couple of options. Things that you could do when a building is going up in flames. Or I need everyone to do on their turn, so Lyra first is make me a fortitude save as the smoke begins to rise in the room and you begin kind of getting it in your lungs. Can we like cover our mouths to get a bonus to the roll or is that not a thing? You can. Okay. But so that could be an action if you'd like to do that. My scarf is already covering my mouth. Nice. Uh, you did say that on the last episode. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Lyra would like to try to cover her face uh, okay. so that she can help um, people. So that'll possible. give you a plus two bonus, and that'll be your move action. Okay. 16. You are totally fine. Woo. So, Lyra and everybody, I'm going to give you the options that you have. So, basically, the mechanics of this are that the the people, the bottle caps, the villagers can move three squares on their turn. Their turn occurs at the end of the round. Villagers caught in the fire become unconscious and they die two rounds later unless they are pulled out of the fire, which is an action that you can take. So your actions are you could flee, you could just run out of here at your normal speed. 
You could fight fires, so you could fight fires in an adjacent square by beating it with a cloak or tapestry, uh, which would cause you to make a combat maneuver check to see if you put it out. If it's out, it's out. If you put all of the fire in a corner out, it ceases to spread. No! On top of that, if you use something like a create water on that tapestry, it will confer a bonus for every gallon of water you were able to produce. If you had something like a bucket, or I know you were reading, Emily, about like how create water could be used to like sprinkle water almost instead of, instead of just create it in a container, uh, you can do that and it will likely put out, there will be, instead of making a combat maneuver chance or check, it'll be a percentage chance to put the fire in that square out. Make sense? Yes. Um, you could also direct the crowd by making a diplomacy or intimidate check. If you succeed, the townsfolk will be able to move twice their speed at the end of the turn. Ooh. Um, and then your final action is save the townsfolk. So as long as you're in an adjacent square to the townsfolk, you can uh, pick up the victim as a standard action, or pick up or drag the victim as a standard action. A single PC can only carry one townsperson at a time, but once you do so, they automatically stabilize, and they're not in danger of dying from the fire unless, like, you guys fall unconscious, the fire spreads back onto them, then, you know, they will die. Make sense? Yeah. Perfect. So, at the top of the order, Lyra, you just used a move action to cover your face, giving you a bonus for the rest of this combat on your... Uh, fortitude saves to resist inhaling the smoke. What would you like to do as a standard action? Originally, I was thinking of creating water, but there's still a lot of townsfolk in here, so I think Lyra is going to work towards the greater good, and she is going to try to use diplomacy to get people out, and she's also going to use her um, plus two bonus to charisma Ooh, for the day because she has yeah. not used oh, that yet. Okay, great call. And I rolled a 19. Ooh, that Ooh. succeeds. So at the end of the turn... Oh, and I do have something she wants to say. Okay, lay it on me. Do not stumble. Get out before we burn and crumble. All right. <laughs> you can always, always count on Emily to pull, <laughs> pull out the rhymes. Thematic rhyming. Okay, so... Well, she's a singer. So make sure you hold me to this, but each townsperson can now move six squares at the end of the at the end of the round so it is now Matumbe's turn okay um I am not going to cover my face I'm gonna roll my fortitude save okay how'd you do bud so I got a natural one my fortitude is at plus five pretty sure that auto easy. fails so you take no actions this turn as you are coughing. God damn it. Now keep track of the rounds that you spend coughing, because if you spend as many rounds as your constitution modifier, you fall unconscious. My constitution modifier is a two. Or not, sorry, your, your score. Your oh, score. thank that's God. My yeah, that's my bad. Um, yeah, it's like, oh shit. Yeah, there's people <laughs> wait, in wait, here with, with probably a zero con um, <laughs> modifier. Okay, so that's your action. You're coughing, so you can't move. Ikmer, what are you doing? Now, you can step directly off of that stage. It's, it's, it would be just like jumping off of a, you know, two, put, two or three foot high platform. It's not super raised. All right. Um, he also is not going to cover his mouth, so he'll take that uh, save. All the boys now. on the side of the table. All right. Uh... Total 18. Yep, he's fine. All right. Then he is going to... Um, and then can he make a perception check to see if there are any other doors? Or I guess would we know if there are other doors or windows besides the front, I guess, the main door? So you can see, obviously, the main doors, but roll the perception check. Uh, big ol' one. Big ol' one. Yeah, you can't, I mean, you look around and there are windows, but, um, 
they look like they'd be like too high to really get out of. It's a it's a pretty tall ceilinged building. Ah, dang! I was hoping to break a window, but that's okay. okay. Glad to see that this town doesn't have a fire marshal. <laughs> it's also the sheriff, and he's been busy. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, Ikmer is going to do a double move in order to get closer to the door, in order to better facilitate characters, uh, I guess, townsfolk getting out of the building. Okay. And so he is going to be moving just to the right of the of the door and I guess and open it hopefully is that I don't uh, know there's swing doors so I'll let you have it okay normally you'd have to like open the door and da 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 and it's a move action but uh, all right because they're just like those like cafeteria doors you would normally have I'll just say you like elbow it open as you run over there all right and then he'll uh, offer a hand uh, to help anyone to get out as quickly as possible. Okay. Sounds good. Eclipse. I guess, remind me, there's one bottle cap flipped upside down. Yes, that is the man that has entered into the fire, and he's currently unconscious, lying, burning. So how exactly can I save him? If you move adjacent to him, you can literally just drag him out. Okay. He's not, like, resisting you at all, so as long as you can carry that much weight, you should be able to pull him out. And and most people have, like, a a drag of, like, hundreds of pounds. Okay, I can just get to him on the pews with this move. Okay. Oh, yeah, I have to make my 42 save, don't I? Yes, you do. Are you covering? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, you're covered. You're covered. I forgot. Uh, that is 17. Okay, you're fine. And I'm gonna run over to the unconscious guy and stand by him. And was that a... That's a double double move. move? Yeah, I'm I'm tiny. Okay, so at the bottom of the turn, you see that, um, the sheriff begins shouting, Come outside! Come outside! Hurry! And, uh, and with Lyra's assistance, the the villagers each move six squares towards the exit. It sounds like they're being attacked by like a zombie inside the like as the building is coming down. It literally sounds like, like a Walking Dead walker. The man roar or whatever. <laughs> All right, so they move. Ooh, what about our uh, special folk? So they're going to... Um, Kendra's actually going to come and help Eclipse with the man that's on fire. So move her one further back so she's diagonal from him. No. Yeah. Just so that she doesn't get hit by the spread of fire if it continues to spread that way. Now, the sheriff is going to stay there and kind of do the same thing as Ikmer is doing. Helping people out until they leave. Councilman Hearthmount is right next to the fire, so I think he's just going to run towards the door. And Councilman Murakar is going to do the same. At the top of the order, I need everyone to roll me a perception check. Natural 20, so 25. Natural 3, so a 9. Ikmer is still a bit shaken up. 4. 8. Okay, so only Eclipse hears... It almost weirdly sounds like a burning coming from outside the building. And she hears this pelting on the lofty windows at the north of the town square, or town hall, as three burning skulls enter the building. Oh, no. From the wall? They're, the see, the windows are high, so I didn't want to place them on the map. Gotcha. So they bust through. They're about 10 feet in the air. They're like flying, burning skulls. Yep, exactly. Okay. Nifty. So you can place those boys up there. Perfect. So you see them enter. I'm going to roll their initiative. They're going before you guys with a 17 on the die. So first things first. Top of round two, the fire in each one 
in each square spreads. So, fortunately, it only spreads in each containment of fire. So, first one goes directly east. Uh, sorry, the, nor the north uh, west one goes directly east into the pews. The next fire goes directly north of itself. The the southwest fire, or yeah, southwest fire goes directly north of itself. The southeast fire goes directly south of itself as well. And the northwest fire goes uh, diagonal to the northeast. Perfect. Finally, the true north fire. Oh no, that guy could get caught. Goes directly to the east. Oh! Perfect. Now that the fire is spread, it is the flaming skull's turn. And what they're gonna do is the one next to Matumbe is going to fly into his square as they are tiny. Make an attack of opportunity. Or actually, your perception was not high enough. Yes, that so is this correct. round, and I'm also coughing along. This round, only uh, Eclipse will get an attack of opportunity on these. So that enters your square. Does an 18 hit you? You know, it wouldn't. But I am flat-footed. So it does. Okay. It does two points of physical damage and five points of fire damage. Okay. The next one flies down to Kendra and is in her square. She gets an attack of opportunity. Uh, she's going to, with a 16, she misses. So it's going to attack at her. 18 on the die will hit Kendra. Great. That's that's just fantastic news. Okay. She's going to take two points of physical damage and three points of fire damage. Finally. The one that entered from the northwest side is going to enter Lyra Square. And it's going to attack at her. I don't think an 11 hits you. No, it does not. Okay. Yay. Not even your flatty? No. Okay, perfect. With that, it is Lyra's turn. Um, do I need to do another move action to keep my face covered? or? No, your face is covered okay. for the rest of this now. Perfect. I'll do my fortitude save. Oh no. Six. That does not beat it. You are coughing up a lung. Matumbe, make your fortitude save. Can I cover my face first or would that incur an attack of opportunity? You need to make your save to see if you can do anything. Oh, fair enough. You're right. All right, I'm switching to my sky blue die. Hopefully that does good things for me. It does, 16 on the die, that's yep. 21. You are fine, you may take your full action. Absolutely. If I cover my face, is that an attack of opportunity from the guy inside my square? No. That's okay. like, that'd be like uh, drawing a weapon. All right, cool. Well, I do that, and then he's going to say... You can't hear him because his mouth's covered. Um, <laughs> thanks thanks for that, uh, holy man. <laughs> All right, um, that is a 16 to hit. Does not hit. Oh. That's bad news, bears. Yep. Okay. Ikmer, make your uh, fortitude save. Ooh, ten. You're fine. All right. I've just been looking out on all the people rolling like ones and twosies over here. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. All right. Um, how? So right now there are... Uh, about four, I guess not about, but uh, five. Uh, there are five villagers still in the town hall. I'm seeing three. 
like three commoners and three then... commoners, and then you have the sheriff, Kendra, and the two councilmen. Okay, I did not distinguish between their uh, social status. Sorry, some are <laughs> some are bottle caps, and others are actual pawns. So. It's the case system in Raven Grill. Yeah, you know. So, anyways. Is there any way Ikmar can better aid these people to get out other than taking a move action and then dragging a an unconscious person or a commoner to uh, to safety? Um, you could you have a couple of options here. You could start fighting the fires to try and put them out. You could you could try to intimidate or diplomatize the people in here to give them a speed boost to get out. You could help Kendra out with the flaming skull that's attacking her. That's probably the only one you can feasibly get to. Hmm. All right. You know, Ikmer's pretty attached to this town. He likes it quite a bit, so he's actually going to try to put out the uh, southeast flames. The southeast flames. And so right now there are three squares of flames. Is there... Can he put out the... He could take a five-foot step from where he's at and put out two squares with two CMB checks. All right. Because he should be... Well, never mind. I thought you were at the corner. But yeah, you... I thought you were in the square over, so you could take the diagonal. Like, if you're in that last pew... Okay. Uh, then definitely. Uh, definitely doesn't do it on uh, this track. Well... Hold on, folks. Do we figure out what your CMB is? Yeah. Okay. It's six. <laughs> well, what's, what's the total? Seven. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that ain't gonna do it. Try All again. right. Oh well, man. He uh, he learned from his mistakes, and now he's at a twenty-six. Okay, perfect. You put that out. <laughs> Feast and famine, baby. So yeah, you can erase that square of fire. Okay. Eclipse. About how much would he weigh? You're fine to drag him with your sixteen strength, unless okay. you're trying to like. Toss him. Just checking. Cause toss him. I'm going to guess he's like 150 pounds. Oh, perfect. My max is 195. Just checking because, you know, I'm only 33 pounds, which is True. Crazy. I know you're a little nugget, so. All right. I am going to straight up just drag him out of here. Okay, perfect. Do I have to do anything? No. Pull him out. Well, I'm going to say we'll call it one of your move actions pulling him out and then... The other move action is you moving with him. Yeah, yeah, I figured it'd take... I, I, I just assumed it'd be half speed to move him out of there. Yeah, if he's that heavy and you're dragging him, I'm sure there's an actual mechanic for that, but... Yeah, it's half speed if I'm over-encumbered, which I would okay, be. Okay, yeah. So, um, I will just be then sitting at the doorway, and he will be out of the building, and I will be just at the doorway. Perfect. I may have saved a life. Nice save. You might want to get him out of the doorway so that people can get out, though. Okay, yeah, yeah. Move him just to the side. Thank you. Perfect. I saved a life, Gus. What about you? Okay, guys, it is the villagers' turn. No one inspired them, really, so that guy's going to move three squares towards the door. The councilmen are each going to move three squares towards the door. As far as they can go. No, he can't, yeah. Okay. And then Kendra is going to attack at this flaming skull. Uh, I don't think that's going to hit. With what she's wielding, which is her fist <laughs> and her low strength. So, um, trying to punch skulls out of the air. Oh, no, I forgot. I'm not going to have her do that. Cause we, she's go gonna ahead. motherfucking disrupt undead. All right. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, also, they're undead. We showed up to a town hall they're meeting. They're skulls. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't know. There's so a we showed up to a town hall meeting with a, in full armor and weapons. Well, you wanted to look imposing when they That's proposed correct. you as the final solution. 
So Kendra is going to disrupt undead. Um, I have to remember how that spell works. I think it's a ranged touch attack and then a d6 of holy damage. That is correct. Yeah, so she makes that touch attack and she deals four points of damage to that floating skull. It is still up, but it's looking busted. With that, it's you guys. Also, uh, uh, she's also taking a five foot step out of there so that she can make that. So, these are a bunch of Knight Rider uh, Nick Cage skulls, yeah, right? Yeah, they're like Nick I Cage's Nick Cage. head. I think, you, I think you mean Ghost Rider. Ghost but Rider. Yes. <laughs> yes. So what did I say? say Knight Rider? Knight Rider. <laughs> oh, okay. boy. Start of the turn, start of the spread. The fire in the north spreads directly south of it. The fire in the northwest spreads directly west of the top square. The northwest, or the northeast, sorry, is what I was thinking. Spreads directly west. Yep. The fire in the southeast spreads uh, directly north of the southmost square. I could have got you, Ick. The fire in the southwest spreads directly east and the fire in the uh, northwest spreads uh, directly east uh, Lyra and, and Matumbe are kind of getting caught up on this stage with fire starting to surround them okay at the top of the order it is the flaming skulls the one on Matumbe is going to Continue to try to attack him. Does a 20 hit you? Oh, it sure does. Okay. Oh, buddy. You take one point of physical and six points of fire damage. Ouch. The one next to Lyra attempts to attack her. Uh, misses with a three on the die. And the one next to Kendra actually moves back up into her space to attack her. 16 on the die will hit her. And Kendra takes two points of physical and four points of fire damage. Um, you guys can see that Kendra does not look in good shape. Matumbe's still up. Matumbe's less than half. He's, he's looking a little, little haggard. Okay. That is the skull's turn. Lyra, you're up. Can she take a five-foot step off of the stage or not? I'll allow it. Okay. Because, again, I said it's not very not very high at all. It's like a two-foot high stage, so I would hardly even consider that, like, a difficult terrain. It's just like stepping down stairs almost. Okay. Um, Steve, do you need healing, like, really bad, or should she try to put the fire out so we can, like escape I uh, if both skulls attack me that would be very problematic I could probably soak up one more skull attack all right um can I cast cure light wounds on him with the th- skull in his square yeah yeah okay. you you should still be able to touch him thank you thank you thank you all right she is going to use cure light wounds and you get six points back okay Matumbe. Like the ocean, you wash away my pain. Um, would he have seen Kendra cast Disrupt Undead? Um, and it being super effective. I can roll a, per- a, a just perception. Just roll a knowledge religion. Oh, good point. So that's a natural one. Yeah. So uh, I, got, I, got it, I got an eight total. You could kind of intuit that because they're skulls, you would expect that they're likely a form of undead. But beyond that, you can't really, you don't know anything special about them. Hey, that's fine. I'm going to take a five foot step off of the stage. So I'm no longer sharing a space with the skull. And I am going to cast the exact same thing that Kendra did Disrupt Undead, which is a Orson slash cantrip. I don't know which okay. one it is, but it. That's a natural one. 
Oh no. Okay. So. God, yeah, you missed on a natural garbage. one. You missed on a natural one. So that's three natural ones. Yeah, uh, you're back to your this old around. self. Wow. Yeah, you had Saw hitting on everything, and Matumbe's back. Can we please go back? <laughs> Ickmer. All right. Uh, he is going to... I'm guessing fire doesn't occur an uh, attack of opportunity. I'm sorry. I, 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 no, I, no, 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 no. I didn't, I didn't roll fort safe. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to cheat That's myself here. I forgot to do that, too. It's all right. I'll let this round slide. All right. I would have made I'm the one that's supposed to be enforcing that. All right. Nobody roll, roll your fort save this round. I'm, I'm apparently letting it all go this round. All right. Uh, a breeze kind of blows some. A breeze smoke blows. Out. <laughs> well, they did break the window open, right, to come in. Yeah. So oh. there's a little fresh air. For Makes a little sense. All right. So, uh, seeing as how Kendra is pretty, uh, is hurting pretty bad, he's going to take a five foot step closer to her and try to attack the skull that is. Uh, it's in, in her, her square, square, so you're within you know range of it. So, go okay. ahead. Does a 14 hit? It does not. Son of a... <laughs> Alright. Eclipse. You just drug that guy out of harm's way. Yep, so fortitude save, right? No, I'm saying this oh. round don't make him because I don't want it to be made it for half and didn't make the rest of you do it. So we'll just pick it up next round. That's cool. I didn't make one last round, I don't think. No, you did. Yeah, well... I'm letting you guys slide with too much. Yeah, yeah, you are. Um, the nicest DM ever. <laughs> the soft DM. <laughs> so, is that skull currently in Kendra Square then? Yes. What kind of minuses do I get for ranged attacks? It would just be a minus four because it is in combat with Kendra and Ikmer technically, but it's not in combat with Ikmer. Ikmer is in combat with it. Okay, so I am going to try and do a ranged touch attack against okay. the one with Kendra. Go for it. Also going to take five foot step away from the door so that... So people can leave? Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm nice. All right. So that is a total of nine touch. Does not hit. Yep. To You're... the touch? To the touch. Just checking. Your raid swings wide. And it's the bottom of the round, so the townsfolk are going to move three squares closer. Councilman Hearthmount is out the door. He okay. has exited the building. Um, the sheriff can see the shit that's going on. He's he's actually going to run deeper into the building to try and help uh, Matumbe and Lyra. So he's going to take six feet. Or six squares of movement in. And just to be clear, the the sheriff is like level 10, right? <laughs> I mean, is that the only way you guys are going to get out of this? Well, if he can move there, he's going to attack the skull as well. Uh, he does not hit. So Kendra is going to take a five-foot step away from the skull. And cast um, Disrupt Undead. Ooh, 20 on the die. Uh, but a 2 to confirm, so she doesn't confirm. 5, and it disintegrates in a burst of holy light. Hell yeah. At the top of the round, the fire begins to spread. The fire at the true north spreads directly to the east from the bottom. So from the bottom square of it. And now that those two square or that those two fires are merged, the other fire doesn't spread. They act as one now. The fire at the um, south or southeast spreads directly to the west. So that's one square away from Ikmer. Yep. Ooh, icky. The fire in the southwest. Spreads one square to the north. <laughs> and the fire in the northwest spreads one square to the east. 
So that fire is right in front of me now. I, I don't catch on fire, do I? You do not, but what happens is the burning skulls in front of you hop into your squares. Each of you take an attack of opportunity. Well, yes, do, because I didn't make you do a um, fortitude save last time. All right. Matumbe is going to swat at the book. Swat with the book at the skull. Natural fucking five. Yep. That's, that's an do. 11 a hit. Nope. Steve. Lyra is going to swing with her morning star, and she gets a 19. Hits. Yes. Oh, damage. That, that, must, that must feel nice. That's <laughs> it must so be, I haven't hit wonderful. once yet. It must be easy. Hit or roll it higher than a three. Ooh, eight damage. Dead. Yes. It bursts into a little ball of flame. The other one, though, attacks Matumbe. Uh, but doesn't hit with a six on the die. It is Lyra's turn. I'm going to make my fortitude save? Yes, please do. Ooh, I rolled a 19. You're good. What do you do? So... Lyra would like to leave the building, but she doesn't want to totally leave Matumbe like surrounded by flames. So, so she is. Appreciate going, that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what a nice person. She is, Did you want to try? Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Finish your. Action. Uh, she was gonna move up and then turn back and try to cast cure or not cure, create water to eliminate the fire uh, that's diagonal to Matumbe. So as her move action, she's moving away, and the spell has a 30-foot okay. range. Go for it. I think you can just create it's just, it, right? Yeah, it's just a creation. She'd like to kind of spread it out, so it's like a spray on that fire that's closest to Matumbe. Okay, what I'm going to say is that with four gallons of water, you can either concentrate it on one square, 100% chance of putting that out. Your chance of putting that out reduces by 25% for each square beyond that that you choose to cover with the water. So if you want to do two, it would be 75% on each. If you want to do three, it would be 50% on each, four, 25% on each, and then five, since you don't have five gallons, won't do anything. All right, Lyra, I didn't have great luck with the uh, percentile dice in our Halloween special. She is going to try to cover two. Okay, so... The two right by Mathumbe? Yes. Perfect. First one, and I'll roll them in front of you. You need a you need higher than a twenty-five. Eighty-six. That goes oh, out. God. The fire next to it. Uh, I think that's just a five. That is just a five. So that one doesn't go out, but you you got the original one that you would have gotten if you tried to just do a hundred percent chance anyway. Right. It opens his path up a little bit. I just really didn't want him to set on fire. Yeah. This would be an awful way to die. Matumbe immolates. Uh, okay, so it is Matumbe's turn, though. Wow, great. Okay, I'm going to use fortitude save. my Matumbe special die. Throwing Make fort fortitude save. save. That's an 18 on the die. Yep, you're fine. All right. Um, I'm going to take a five-foot step to the south. Look back at the flaming skull and um, try to disrupt undead. Natural 20. All right. Here we go. Well to confirm. This is where the luck is turning around. Confirm. 12 on the die. Um, a touch attack. You add what? Your, a range touch? Uh, it should be like your dex. dex. Oh, that's just here to hit. Yeah, so you would be at a plus one plus whatever your dex is. All right, so I got a 15 against touch. Exactly. Oh, my God. Roll this your, is amazing. Roll your crit, which is just 2d6. Ah, here we go, baby. Big money. Medium money. That's a seven. Exactly what you needed in the Whoa! Dead. Oh my god! So those are what dead now. What a hero. Now. Those are dead now. There are still people in this burning building. This building is still burning down. There's smoke everywhere. You are still in initiative order. You guys can choose to let this building burn down, or you can choose to f- stay and fight the fire while making sure that all of the citizens are out. Ikmer, it's your turn. To make a fortitude save. Yes, please. 17? You're fine. All right. 
there are uh, two fire... And they are each adjacent to you, so I will let you make two CMB checks to put out two squares. Well, I'm glad you said that, because that is exactly what he's going to do. He's going to start with the uh, one diagonal to him. Natural 18. Yep, it goes out. And natural 20. With a natural 20, put a third square out there. All right. All right, Eclipse. Um, so what is still left from there? It's kind of... Just just the original. Just the original? Yep, just the original square now. So if you put that out, it'll be one less fire that spreads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And already there's only one that's spreading from the two that are joining. Okay, so Eclipse will walk up to the original north, or no, southeast fire and try to put that out. Okay. Roll CMB. Natural 20! All right, you put it the hell out. Yeah! We're learning. The skulls are out of combat. They have all been disintegrated. Thank God. Oh, did you roll your fortitude? Oh, me no. Um, that's a, I think a 15. Okay, you're fine. Yeah. So... The fire at the northeast spreads to the east, so pick one of the squares that is empty there. See there's empty squares between it and the wall? It'll spread to one of those. The fire to the southwest will spread to the north. Now you're fighting two fires. This almost seems doable. Okay. It is Lyra's turn. She's going to make her fortitude save. 11. She's coughing. Ah. You see, uh, you can tell the smoke is getting thicker in here. It's getting harder and harder. Did you add your plus two, by the way? I did, yes. Okay. It's getting harder and harder to breathe in here. Matumbe, you're up. All right. Is that your second time coughing? Yes, not consecutively, but do I need to keep track of my keep total? Keep track. You okay. check how many you've coughed. Okay, here we go. Well, a six on the die brings me to a 13. Uh, you are not coughing. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right, so Matumbe is going to take a five-foot step towards the closest big old fire. Um, he kind of got the context clues here from his friends Eclipse and Ikmer that we're going to try and save this building instead of just booking it out of here. He's going to make two CMB checks to see if he can put them out. Sure. Well, the one is a 15 and the other's an 18. Both succeed. Awesome. You guys didn't know Matume was a firefighter in uh, the Moggy Expanse. Oh, uh, you, should, you should really send him outside so he can like dig up a grave. And like take all that grave dirt and start shoveling it onto yeah. onto the fire. I'm into it. The one t- the one Pokemon episode when Erica's gym burns down taught me that uh, dirt works just as well as water when putting out a fire. Accurate. I, <laughs> accurate. <laughs> I don't share that cultural touchstone with you, but I'll That's take okay. you at your word. That's okay, brother. Ick. All right. Um, there is still fire in the uh, northeast, <laughs> so. As we can tell by the people screaming that are... <laughs> the, the flaming zombies, apparently. Yeah. Uh, and so he is going to yeah, no move 10 feet uh, to the northeast in order to try to uh, put out some flames. Oh, after he makes a fortitude check. Ooh, nine. Oh, he does not move up there. He is coughing. Eclipse. Make that fortitude save. Um, <laughs> I uh, got a total of nine. I rolled a natural one. Okay, oh. so you are also coughing. Yep. It's been a tough round for the Brady Bunch. <laughs> and with that, the fire begins to spread again. No. But it's only two fires spreading. Oh, it's three fires because Matumbe did that. So Matumbe! Uh, the northernmost Sorry, fire... Spreads directly to the east. 
the fire below it spreads. Well, it would spread if it has a spot to spread to the east. It'll spread to the east. What are what is Kendra? What do they go? Oh yeah, it was their turn at the end of the turn. Yeah. So um, actually, Kendra's going to begin to help too. She casts. She moves, or she doesn't move. She casts create water on the fire in the corner. And you know what? She's going to try for three. She needs a 50% chance on each one. She's going to try and target that brazier, though. So she's getting the three around the brazier. All right. First one, 90. Yeah. Second one, 69. Nice. <laughs> Third one, uh, 27. So it does not go out, but she got two. Um, the sheriff sees that you guys are trying to put these fires out, so he actually moves to the um, to the west and begins trying to put that out. He tries a CMB check. He makes it with a 15 on the die. I think putting out this fire will help our poll ratings. We kind of need yeah. it yeah. in this, in this poor it, yeah. little town. So you guys already did the spread for those two fires, so the fire against the, um, the western wall is going to spread to the east. So basically what he just put out would light again. Good try, Chef. Okay. Lyra, you're up. Fortitude save. Eight. Nope. Ooh. Coughing. Mark that down. Matumbe. All right. Fortitude save. Four on the die. That brings me up to an 11. Does not make it. Okay. Coughing. Ickmer. How about a 19? That makes it. All right. You might have to start dragging your friends out of here because if they continue to cough, they're not going to be able to run outside as the building lights up. And you can tell it's getting harder and harder to breathe. All right. Well, uh, he's pretty far away from the fire still, but uh, he's going to at least try to... Ooh, can he charge at the flames? (laughs) Yes, but I need you to make me a reflex save when you get there so that you can stop short enough to not fall in. No, that That would be an important thing to do is not stop short. (laughs) Never blast through the fire. Oh, yeah. I mean, 11. An 11? You're fine. Awesome. All right. And then, because uh, he made his move, he's only going to try to put out one square. And an 18 on the dot. Yep, you're good. That goes out. Eclipse. All right, so it seems as though on the west, Ick, Lyra, and the sheriff will be taking care of the flames. And on the east, it looks like Myself, Motumbe, and Kendra will be trying to take care of it. So mm-hmm. I'm going to move further east and up towards the brazier that started it and make a CMB check. Okay. Oh, I need to do fortitude. Yep. I guess before I can do any of that, um, I have a 14. You're good. All right. So CMB check. Rolled the same thing. Uh, and I got a nine. The fire doesn't go out. Cool, cool. Hope it doesn't spread. Right into you? Yeah, me too. Um, okay, Kendra is going to, again, create water. Again, targeting three squares. She's first going to target the square right in front of Eclipse because she can see Eclipse is like right next to the spreading flames. If she doesn't hit that, she's going to, well, she has to spread her, uh, create water in a way that would cover the three. So she doesn't really have an option. But the first one is an 82, so it goes out. Thank you, Kendra. Next one is only a 17, so it doesn't go out. And the middle one. Is a 32, so it doesn't go out because she had to split it 50 50 50. The sheriff is going to take a five foot step and attempt two CMB checks in order to put out the two flames that he will then be adjacent to. 
first check makes it. Second check. Natty 20 makes it. Beautiful. We're actually pretty good at this. Except we're gonna, we're gonna do an Ikmer too, and since he was oh no, he wasn't close enough to hit. If he was close enough to hit two, I'll give you the Natty 20 to hit two. Um, so that's their turn. The fire continues to spread. The northernmost fire heads south, and pretty much any way you dress it, that's touching the other fire, so the other fire doesn't move. Yeah, even on a diagonal, it becomes one fire. Uh, the fire on the western wall heads directly south as well. And it's Lyra's turn. Lyra, please make me a fortitude save. Okay. Get it. A 14? That makes it. Yes! yes. Okay. Uh, Lyra has been doing a lot of coughing, so she is going to move closer to the door. <laughs> so she can be drug out faster? Exactly. And then she... Now, I don't know. Create water, it doesn't, like, come out of my hands, correct? So I don't have to have, like, direct line of sight. I can cast you it. You've got to know, like, uh, the the area that you're trying to cast it over, basically. Okay. So, so you could certainly see the stuff beyond Ikmer that is on fire and still cast it. All right, so she is going to try to attempt three squares right in front of Ikmer. All right. Let's see it. Percentile. Got to get above 50. Let me use my Lyra dice. 75 for the first yep, one. that takes it. Only a 39. Nope. And then the final one. 89. Woo! Nice. Beautiful. Okay, so she puts out two squares of fire. Matumbe, it's your turn. All right. Rolling a fortitude save. Not in the die. That's a 16. Nice. You okay. got it. Unfortunately, if I want to put out two fires, I'm going to break up the fires again. So guess I'm doing that. So I'm going to take a five-foot step and uh, going to try and take care of two, realizing that... You You're know, hoping that Kendra can probably get the one behind you. You see yeah. she's basically a human fire hose. Sky blue, sky blue die is the north, green's the south. If anyone wants to look at my tray, that's double natty 20s. What? You don't have to, don't have to Oh, wait, no, you're doing a CMB check. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Boom. That's take out 20s. the take out the diagonal one as well. Hell yeah. Matumbe just does like the, su the superhero like take a knee and he has his book in one hand and his shield in the other and he just smothers the flames. How is the fine? <laughs> I was gonna say, how is the book not caught on fire? It's bound in iron. Okay. Because that protects the pages. And it's uh, it's it's <laughs> soaked up all that good phrasma juice over the years. So. All right, Igmer, it's your turn. Oh, all the phrasma juice actually gives you a plus one to put out wet or put out flaming things yeah. with the. All right, he's going to take a step forward and a uh, five-foot step forward and do a uh, double combat maneuver check. Oh, wait, he needs to roll his... Oh, he does. Yeah. How about an 11? An 11 does not make it, my friend. He is coughing. <laughs> Eclipse. All right, fortitude save first. Um, and I got higher than last time. So. It gets higher every turn, so... Oh, okay, hang on. Tell me what, exactly what you got. Because the room is basically filling with smoke. 16. You're fine. Okay. Do uh, fantasy fires work like real-life fires? Because, you know, we probably should have established that beforehand. <laughs> also, yeah, no, Brooks and I are both wearing our uh, fire department shirts today. Oh my god, I can't believe... I <laughs> you did I it. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> nice. Thematic. Yeah, so I guess with that, uh, I'm going to take a five-foot step up and fight these two fire squares. All right, so the I first... I don't think you took a five-foot step. Didn't you have to move up? No, just a five-foot up. Okay. So the first one was only a ten. That doesn't put it out. I didn't think so. Next one. Ooh, 16 on the die. Yeah, puts it out. All right, 
there's still two fires over here in this northwest corner or northeast corner. Okay. That was Eclipse's turn. With that, the sheriff is going to take a five foot step towards the brazier and is going to attempt to put out two fires. A 20 and a 16 on the dive. Beautiful. Puts Damn. out three fires. The three in front of them. Hell yes. So the original brazier in the northeast corner is out. Yep. Then Kendra. Uh-oh. I think she's still okay. Fortitude wasn't great, but she's still okay. So she's going to move up a little bit. And she's... I think she's going to go for gold. I think she's going to try all of these. Ooh. The last three? The last four. four. Well, oh, all four. So what what do you have to hit on the percentile? I got to hit a 75. Or I got to beat a 75. Jesus. Right, it's the twenty-five percent chance. Oh, yeah, man. you're going bold because it's not your characters. Me, 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 me. Forty-seven does not put it out, so I'm starting from the far one and moving in, so that doesn't go out. Seventy-seven puts it out. Seventy-eight puts it out. Nice. And the final one. Ooh, seventy. Oh. A lot of seventies. Oh. Does not put it out. And the fire moves. The fire along the wall, along the uh, western wall, wall moves north one. The fire along the northern wall moves south one. And the fire along the western wall moves south one. (gasps) <gasps> oh, that's directly Oh no That's a square So, Eclipse, I'm going to have you make a reflex save Alright, I'm really bad at this Natural 20 Cool, yes. you jump and you're <laughs> just one further away from it Put yourself in any adjacent square With that It is Lyra's turn Make me a fortitude save Oh, a whopping seven. Seven does not do. You are coughing. Cool. I'm a two-may reflex save. Fortitude save. Uh, fortitude save. You're right. Uh, <laughs> 21. You're good. Okay. So he's going to take a five-foot step towards the flames. There are two squares in front of him. He's going to take two combat maneuver moves to try and set them out. Uh, sky blue is going to be north. 11 on the die, that's a 16 to put out the northern. Yep. And then 4 on the die is a 9 to put out the southern. Does which not put does the not southern put out. Southern. Okay, Ikmer. Alright, he'll take a save. Which is a 17. He's fine. Alright, he's going to take a 5 foot step forward and try to uh, put out both of the fires in front of him. Nice. How about a 16? Puts it out. And a 22. Definitely puts it out. Awesome. So there are only uh, two squares of fire left on the westernmost wall. It, we're just like slamming his shield down on these fires. <laughs> He's putting it out with yeah. his hands. <laughs> He's just spitting his, on it. <laughs> in his face. <laughs> okay. Clip. How are you producing that much saliva? Oof. What's that Ford save looking like? 12. That does not make it. You're Often. coughing. Okay. Okay. It's going to be the citizen's turn, or not citizens, the sheriff and Kendra. Um, Kendra, help me out. So the sheriff makes his fortitude save. Kendra is coughing. The sheriff um, attempts two combat maneuver checks to put out the fire. All right. Makes both of them. Beautiful. Nice. Amazing. Knocked out the so fire. There's no that more wall. fire on the western wall. There's two squares on the northern and two squares on the eastern. Okay. The fires on the northern wall and eastern wall are each going to spread at this point. 
the northern wall spreads, or I guess it's no longer along the wall, but it spreads east, and then the other one doesn't continue touching. to spread because it's touching. So, Lyra, you're up. Make that fortitude save. Ten. Nope. Oh You're coughing. Are you how keeping many, track of this? How many I rounds? am. I'm at five now. Okay. Team Bay is going to try sports save. Twelve on the die. That's a nineteen. Yep. You're good. All right. He takes a five foot step, so he can be up next to two separate instances of fire. He's gonna roll. Neon green is west. Dark blue is east. Uh, fuck. Two. Uh, not enough on the. East west is a uh, twelve. Yep. Oh, okay. So the westernmost square is out. Ikmer. He is going to say, "Sheriff, you should probably get out of here. I mean, if you can stay, you can. But I'll help you get out if you can." And he is going to do his best to aid the sheriff to uh, to get out and hopefully help the other town folk that are outside, um, if that's possible. Okay, that sounds good. So in his attempts to leave, you'll aid him, but if he decides... Actually, make me a diplomacy check, um, and it's just going to work as like your aid and other action, so B to 10. All right. Um, and what I'm going to have this do is if he decides to stay, he's staying because he knows that even if he sm- if he falls from smoke inhalation, he trusts that Ickmer will drag him out. Uh, if he decides to leave, he'll be able to, you know, traverse the terrain much easier and get out and potentially call for aid. So I'll say your aid works in either one of those two ways, and then we'll decide what he does on his turn. Okay, uh, but first, I'll take my fortitude fortitude save. Oh, good. Oh, not great with a nine. Well, I'm glad we went into all of that. Just oh, yeah. to cough your lungs out. Instead we of can cut that out in post. <laughs> you tried. You were like... Jerv! <coughs> 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 so, it's Eclipse's turn. Ooh, that's really pretty good. Um got 20. You're fine. Alright. I'm gonna try and put out these two fires. So... Take a five foot step just so that if you get a 20 you can get all of them. Okay. It feels <laughs> risky. Feels risky. There's fire all around you. Alright. So first one... Uh, I got 16 on the die. Yep, you're good. Nice. Put whichever one out. Next one... 14 on the die. You're which... good. Put one out. Yeah. There's, there's one there's square one of fire there's left. one more. Between, uh, well, not between, but like next to Motumbe, Motumbe and I. All right. Kendra and the sheriff's turn. Kendra makes the fortitude save. <gasps> All right. The sheriff doesn't. So he falls. Kendra creates water. 100% chance. 100% chance of putting this fire out, and the fire is out. The smoke is still an issue. The sheriff is on the ground, coughing his lungs out. But combat is over. And I think you guys, you know, with the windows open, it's it's becoming, you know, it, it's still definitely fucking with your lungs, but... I think you guys would be able to get everyone out before any of you, you know, died of smoke inhalation or any of that. You exit the building to a crowd and they, they cheer for you. They cheer for you. They see that the, the smoke has kind of stopped coming out of the building and the building's been saved. Yes, there's fire damage, but that can be repaired. If the whole building went up, the central hub of town would have been gone. And they cheer for you guys, and it's late evening at this point, and I need you guys to finish your drinks, because we'll see you next week. Oh, yeah! I knew it. Woo!